Here are five tips to help you take better photos of climbers today. Tip number one is called face out. What this means is effectively try and get the picture of the climber to include their face. A lot of the time we're seeking for a bit of an emotional reaction to a photo. If we can get the climber's face in it, it means that we can almost identify with the climber and it becomes a lot more impactful. If you see them trying hard, like something on this, it works a lot better than if you're seeing just their back with their t-shirt in a photo like this. A lot of the time this is effectively going to influence at what angle you take the photo. You're not going to be able to see their face from behind them, so why shoot there? I mean, you might. There might be some amazing kind of route, which a route set will do, where, you know, they've done a 360 on the wall, and those make for amazing shots too. However, it's usually a safer bet and a lot more impactful to shoot from one of the two sides, or even above if you can, you know. Mix it up, but always try and get that face in there. Tip number two is what we're calling action and reaction. This kind of links to number one because a lot of the time the reaction is what you see on the climber's face, but it can also be what you see on say the audience face or a spotter's face. All of those particular things add to the action and they tell a bit more of a story. Sometimes when people are trying a bit harder, they're gonna get more of a reaction. I remember when I was out at Stanage and someone was trying to carry out this talk, all of the walkers going by were looking at this climber and they just had these, you know, awestruck faces on them. And those are the reactions which you almost want. You want something to show all because this sport is impressive. It's something which we can all show off about. Tip number three is something I really struggle with, however, it's something I'm trying to get better with in some of my more recent photos, and that's called clean it up. What this effectively means is it means getting rid of all the clutter and all the rubbish in the background because, especially when we do go climbing, we are quite messy. I mean, I know that's one of some of my favorite photos. They could just be improved a little bit better if I just, you know, got rid of the bag out of the background or had less distractions in the photo because a lot of the time with our kit we do have bright colours and that can take away from what is effectively the main focus of the picture. Your brain will automatically look at bright colours before it looks at dark colours, just it's how our eyes have evolved. So what we need to do is we need to change it so the only bright colours that might be involved are on the climber. So you, you look at the climber first, you don't look anywhere else. There are a couple of ways to solve this if you're like, well, you know, we kind of need to have the bouldering pads there for safety. If you want to get rid of the bouldering pads, what you can do is you can set up your camera on a tripod and take the photo. And once you're happy with it, take another photo of, say, a completely clean area. So move all your backs, move all the bouldering pads and have it so it's set in the exact same way. It almost seems a bit more of a natural photo, even though we're manipulating it, it looks a lot more clean. Tip number four is something which I've seen a lot of people do, but not many people have spoken about, and that's and what I call it is landscape but more, or kind of landscape plus one. And it's use the photograph as a landscape photograph. Take something which is really beautiful backdrop and then just add the climber in as kind of a plus one. You're not trying to think just about the climber specifically, but you're trying to think of a, a landscape shot and just adding more. Because landscape shots, a lot of the time, have their own beauty, they have their majesty. And adding a climber in will just take it from nine out of 10 to a 10 out of 10. And the final tip is just choosing a different focal length than what you're used to. A lot of the time when we take photos, we use wider angle lenses such as 14 or 24 millimeter, but this isn't always the way you want to go. Sometimes a more zoomed in lens, something like a 70mm or an 85mm or an even 200mm will give a nice compression to the background which it adds a bit more than just a 24mm does. One of my favourite things to do, which is copying someone else's technique, it's called the Brenheiser method, where you zoom in as much as you can and then you take a panorama all the way around your subject. So effectively you've taken multiple photos all around and it gives an incredibly shallow depth of field but you have a really wide angle look and it provides something which is quite interesting. One of my favorite photos I've ever taken was done using this uh, method. I effectively set up a timer with the camera on a tripod, took one photo of me on the wall, 
and then shot photos all around it and then create this lovely wide angle image. No matter what happens, you want to create a unique looking photo. And these tips definitely helped me do that. So yeah, those are my five tips for climbing photography. Hopefully this will have helped you. Hopefully it will give you some ideas as to what to do next because especially this day and age, now that everyone has a camera, it's always good to try and stand out amongst the crowd. And these are the tips which I've learned, which maybe have helped some photos shine a bit more than others. If you've liked this video, give it a like, maybe share it with someone and subscribe if you're feeling friendly.